Hey, y'all. Zach Glazer here, the legal tech advisor at Lawyerist, and I'm joined today by Kim Mayberry from Knackley. Kim, thanks for being with us today. Oh, thanks for having me. So, Kim, we're, we're talking about, um, well, Knackley does automated documents for, for those right. people that, that don't know. Um, and it does some, some very advanced automated documents. We're not talking about just, um, you know, find and replace sort, sort of things. We're talking about um, really... Um, things that some of the, the other products um, aren't aren't capable of. Right. So to talk to me about, uh, I guess, document automation in itself, you, you've you've kind of told me that you see it in kind of three tiers, document automation right. broadly. Right. Yeah. If I think I think of them in three tiers and, and really it's a functionality tier. So mm -hmm. tier one, you can think of as basically basic mail merge. So right. what the, your client management system has usually built into it, or you could use Word itself for that. Mm -hmm. Tier two extends that um, to kind of simpler document automation, adding conditions and things. Um, maybe I'll do some list things, but usually is focused on generating one document. Mm -hmm. uh, Kind of so i'd say that's kind of the the basic document automation then you get tier three where you're really starting to think about systems mm -hmm. um and how you know you you're looking at multiple documents multiple ways of gathering information and having that it really is creating a system for you and i i think to kind of clarify a little more or, or just add a little bit more color to to that uh, you know with tier two um yeah you could have multiple documents that are that are created but you in a way you have to choose those or have them pre-chosen you know right. they're they're not necessarily selected or created or or generated the the, the choice isn't necessarily generated from the information that you gather for a tier right. three you right. know a, a tier three says here are the questions and we're gonna and based on these questions we're gonna give you an answer is how right. i think of it yeah, and that's that's a, a really good distinction, because you know based on questions that you answer, based on whatever in, inputs, and supposed to just happen to say, I want this document and going into this document, we can actually it builds it out for you automatically. Because mm -hmm. when I was practicing, um, I did uh, a lot of landlord tenant work uh, as a, a um, as a creditor's rights attorney, and in building some of the, the the processes that I had for creating documents like leases, I would have information that I filled in, but then I would have check boxes. Do you want this clause in? Check that. Right. Do you want this clause out? Check that. Is is the person, you know, in this state or something like that? And so it'd be check boxes. And so yeah, that's smarter than maybe just simple mail merge, but it's it's not really, you know, kind of asking the the broad questions and then telling me essentially what I need in this document. I'm still having right. to make the decisions as to what's in this document. Right. And so, so along those lines, and, and I kind of would like to show people a little bit of, of an example of something like that. I, I, prior to this, I sent you a lease that I used. Um, it's probably a little dated because um, I, I haven't practiced landlord tenant law in, uh, in a couple of years, but a lease that I used in Tennessee. And there are some um, ways of, there, there's some addenda, that need to be added based on some of the inputs that we have. And uh, you've come up with with a a system of using the right. Knackley platform. Um, if you wouldn't mind kind of showing us and, and walking us through that a little bit and some of the decisions that we had to make. Yeah, so it, right now you're looking at the, the Knackley dashboard, which is basically where we've got our different clients. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new lease agreement here. Mm -hmm. And with this, you know, when you're, you're kind of looking at it, um, you can put, put branding and things so you can make it look like your own, your own colors and things. But so let's, let's just talk about what goes into a lease. Usually you want to know who is, who's doing the lease. So the lease or you need to know which property it is. So in your case, mm -hmm. if you working with multiple um, lessors and they have multiple properties, you know, creating that. And then who are the tenants going to be? And when you think about tenants, you've got to start thinking about, are they over the age of 18 or not? Mm -hmm. um, so you can approach that. In this case, I just thought from a, 
and user perspective, it made sense to just say um, people over the age of 18 or people under the age of 18. But I could certainly just have them put in the tenant information and with that, have them put in a birth date and then mm -hmm. and do it that way. But mm -hmm. um and, and, and you, this just to back up real quick, they, this whole system is is something just built on the NACLI platform. So the the for for my purposes, the NAC and Associates would be the the law firm that I sent you guys right. this from, and this would be the the back end to where my firm is kind of creating these documents, this lease document. Right. So yes, and then you know. So let's just go through, start filling this out and kind of walk through it. So who's yeah. a lessor, you know, you're working with multiple clients. Um, I, we've got a way that I can select. So if I'm working as a law firm, I'm working with real rents and first rentals. And, you know, I mm -hmm. could have a hundred different ones here. Right. I, I click the button here. I select it. It brought in all the information that I pre-filled out mm -hmm. for me. So I don't have to go through and re-enter re that every time. Right. And that, that comes from up there at the top, um, yep. the, the landlords tab right there. So and, I and can we actually could, click on landlords and add as many as I want. Okay. And, and we could put a lot of, again, you guys built that back end where we could put a lot of different information for that landlord. If we needed to, this is just the information that was necessary for the lease that I sent you specifically. Correct. Right. So if you start thinking about it, maybe you need to send out a report every month to the landlord mm -hmm. or there's, or there's, things that you need to, you know, notices that you need to send or anything like that, you can now use the landlords to generate documents too. So it's not mm -hmm. just bringing in information here, but you can use it for different things. And in this case, I also have a rental property. So I have all the rental properties here that I can also enter. Uh, as you think about like the, who the lessor is, is let's say you have something like Clio and you have a matter associated with this, I could just as easily select this information right from Clio as mm -hmm. well and pull their inf the information right in from Clio or, well, and, and or one the, of the other systems that we integrate with. It, yeah, it, and but the interesting thing about Clio specifically is that you guys have a two-way uh, integration. Right. And so you can you can use the, the portion of this platform that takes in information and you can send that to Clio yes. as well. Yeah, and we're the only ones today that do that. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's pretty cool the way things have come together. Mm -hmm. so now I'll just select what the rental property is. Certainly if I have a new client, I could go through and put on in all their information, but you know, this is a lot of information to be entering every time. So why mm -hmm. not just fill it out once I'm going to select the sweet briar one. And it basically fills out. It says our pets allowed in this single family home. Does the, does the landlord want pets? Or if not, then it's going to say no. Um, mm -hmm. If it's built between 19, before 1978, do we have the property disclosure, um, lead paint disclosure or not? Mm -hmm. um, so we can go through and do that. Security deposit, how often is rent paid, the lease amount? So we've got the information, so we don't have to re-enter it every single time we go into it. Right. That's but, really but we what could, the system does. But we could change this as, as we yeah. go. But but you know, as a as a attorney for landlords, we were dealing with the same properties over and over, you know, right. as we as we went. Right. And so it just allows you to not have to enter every single time. Mm -hmm. So now I got my my rental property in here. And now who are the tenants going to be over age 18? So let's just go ahead and put some information in here. And certainly, you know, this is what we need to create the document, but you may, you may want some more information, you know, their social security number there, where they're mm -hmm. currently renting. There's mm -hmm. a little bit more to it um, that you may want to be gathering from them. And you certainly can. Mm -hmm. and, and as we're doing this, all of this information, you sent me a, uh, a link that would allow me to enter this information. So all of this information could be third party facing as well. Yes. So you could send this to your client and say, Hey, when you do new leases, just use this platform here and it'll put that information into your system. Right. Which makes it really 
it reduces your time doing it. So, Absolutely. So I've got two people over the age of 18 and then I'll just do under age 18 because we just want to mm -hmm. know who's going to be there. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the over 18 is going to sign under 18 or not. Right. Uh, then we can ask, are there any pets? Uh, because this property allows pets. And then I can go through and put in, you know, Fido, because I, I want to know a little bit more about it. And let's just say you don't, you only allow dogs and cats and, mm -hmm. and, and so that you can kind of, so the lab, black, eight, license number, I guess that's a city license number. And then. Mm -hmm. So oh, that doesn't really match up, does it? No. <laughs> We're doing it live. Um, but that's that's the thing. You can get a lot of information in here, and it's it's not really onerous. And so you right. can ask a little bit more um, information right. than you might on the front end when you're sitting there at the table um, with somebody having them fill out a lease, you know? Right. And like, say, say your rabies shot, if you have to have it every so many years and it, mm -hmm. and we see that it's not, and it's before a certain date, you know, you didn't have to have it every six years or something. You can mm -hmm. flash a flag and say, Hey, you need to have a rabies shot before you, and before you become right. part of it, before you can sign your lease or whatever it is, or. Right. Well, so, I, and I can envision a scenario where you actually have that information in your system. Let's say you, you send that information to Clio or you you have that information in NACLI and as as a date gets closer and it starts to get time for that you know as that rabies shot gets further and further away well maybe an email goes out that says hey this these people may want to re-up their rabies shot or something you may want to get evidence that they have the rabies shot right there. right and I think that's the that's the the systematizing this yeah as opposed to just creating a document, creating the the initial solution, we're creating a system for for um, you know you and your clients to take care of these problems, right? And then I you know here I just have my pet owners, and this is pulled from the list of people that are going to live there. You know, is who who is considered the pet owner? Mm -hmm. and, um, and just just to be clear, as we're going through this, this this isn't this isn't what Nackley is this is what nackley does this is right. this was done from me this was done from my lease it can be done from you know any document that you have that that's like this um and based on whatever type of stuff that that needs to be entered for that right and that's the powerful part is that you can get you can this can work the way you're used to working or the way you want to be able to work mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. And I just keep going down through it. So what is the release agreement date? You know, what date are we going to sign? When's the initial rent due? Let's say the 23rd. And when is the lease going to start? Let's just say they're going to move in on. And when will it, that lease end date? So I can certainly. I'll and that do. clause is changing in real time. Yeah, <laughs> that clause right there is changing in real time and has prorated the the information there on that that fourth line. Right. Um, so if I actually say the 25th, a new amount is put in. So it's automatically calculating. And in this case, I actually have it. So it's automatically calculating based on the number of days in the month. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if there are 31 days, I'm dividing by 31 days. If there's 30 days, I'm divided by 30 days. You know, that's the thing that I, that I, the type of thing I like to bring up when, when I think about, we have the technology to do blank. We don't have to say, okay, let's just, you know, the tie goes to the, the renter and we're just going to do it by, you know, 31 days every time or, or whatever right. it is. No, we can figure out exactly what it is because we have the technology to, to write it into the platform now. Right. Right. You also notice here that it's a 12 month lease. Mm -hmm. If I, if I really wanted to, I could have done this the opposite way and say, I want a 12 month lease. And then it would, could have said when the end of the lease date was. So I could have gone the other way. And I was kind of, as I was going through your documents, I was, I was debating which way do I go? And I decided on 
putting the end of the lease date, but I could have just as easily done how many months is this? Um, am I going to accept a partial month? Mm -hmm. And if I'm going to accept a partial month, it will just bump it out to the last day of that month. And then we can figure out what that exact date is and be ready. It automatically figures it out for you. And that's that client centric or user centric design. It's, it's how are your clients going to do this? You know, are, right. are your, are your landlords are the, the um, lessors generally going to put in the first day and the last day, or are they going to say, Hey, this is a 12 month lease. It starts on this day. Tell me when it ends. You know? Right. Cause, and that's becomes the powerful piece to it. And that's mm -hmm. the system around it. Right. It, and this is this is a, sim a, a relatively simple example. You know, this is the thing that just kind of pops into my mind every time I think of automating documents is is leases because they're they're relatively simple to automate, but they also work through those three tiers pretty pretty well. You know, you you can really easily get a a lease and just do find and replace or mail merge or something like that and do that right out of of Word. You can do it out of most of your your law practice management systems and it just does a a mail merge and then you can also create something that has a little bit of conditional logic maybe changes things around maybe counts some things maybe changes um you know genders appropriately and the adds the the s's at the end of some plural words um and, and that can be done relatively easy with leases as well and that's kind of another step and then you can you know there's enough document here that it's worth creating a system for as well right and it really i you know i think as you start thinking about systems i think you've got you do have to look at how many of these do you do a month right because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you do need a return on investment on it right. if you if you do two of these a year you know that's totally different than if you're doing 20 of these a month or 10 of these a month or whatever the number is Right. Or if you don't have to track this information, because going through this, what I what I see on this is we're actually gathering a lot of information about this interaction, about this this relationship that is being created. And that's something that the lawyers generally want to to be able to keep track of. Um, right. But more than anything, it, 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 it could in this scenario help your landlords, you know, do things faster more simply or, you know, with less interaction with you or, or with a little bit more interaction with you, but, but they still feel more comfortable or something. Right. Um, can, can we take a look at, um, what, what would this end up like? So if, if we go yep. to, um, creating this thing, so let's just let's go to the lease first. So here's, here's our lease. Mm-hmm. So again, who are the occupants? You know, who's the landlord? What's their mm -hmm. information? And I scroll down and and the landlord, I've got that information, what the date is, and and then signatures for the people that need to sign. That's okay. one of the things that I like is that there's two signature blocks there because two people need to sign. If there had been four people that need to sign, you can make four signature blocks right. there. Instead of having to go through and delete, you know, put in four signature blocks and then you're deleting it after you're done or, you know, mm -hmm. the things mm -hmm. that you'd have to do in mail merge. Right, right. Yeah. Every time I created um, automated documents uh, when I was practicing it, it was, you know, you, you build, you put everything you possibly can in there and then delete. Yeah. And, and that's fine. And, and a lot of people are doing that. And that's, that's perfectly fine. But, you know, again like i was saying earlier we have the technology now we have the ability to do things like this so well kim i i think that's a a pretty good look under the hood here um is there anything else that that you think um people should see before we before we kind of go you know just like look at when you're thinking about naming convention um mm -hmm. you'll see here that i was able to name harry jones pet agreement um and i think i did one the, with Harry, and I was able to actually say no pet agreement. You yes. know, there there's things at a at a naming convention that we can now name the documents instead of when you get into Word having to name them that we can actually handle when they're created in the first place. So, and so this document, the the no pet agreement, was named that because you you didn't have a, you, the property 
didn't allow for pets. Did not allow a pet. And if that or became... I, yeah, or that that he said they weren't going to do a pet. Okay. So I wanted to make sure that they were going to continue to not have a pet. Right. Right. And, and because then... I may have a different deposit depending on if they have a pet or not, and I want to make sure that it's taken care of. Mm -hmm. And this really lets you know right offhand that no pets are allowed. I mean, just with the, the name of it. So, right, right. I, I like that. Well, and also over here on the, the left hand side, you can see all the leases that have been created using right. this and, and who the, who the, the less, the lessees are under right. there. And, and I'm sure we could put more information there if, if we needed to. Yeah, um, we absolutely could. Um, you know. We could put who the landlord is next to it. We can, mm -hmm. there's a lot of things that we can do. We could actually put a little summary here of the, the lease terms as well. If we mm -hmm. just wanted to be able to have a quick glance and know this is what's happening with this particular uh, client. Well, so I, I guess what this kind of leads me to um, in looking at the designer um, uh, tag up there at the right hand side, um, obviously, this can be done bespoke. You know, I, somebody could send send this in to you and have these uh, created. You guys have a lot of experience with creating and automating documents. Um, is it something that an attorney can kind of handle making some of this themselves as well? Yeah. So kind of what I'd say is if you understand some logic, mm -hmm. then you can automate the documents. Okay. Um, so the idea of if I want this, then it's going to pull in this information. Mm -hmm. So, and we have training materials, a uh, training website that's going to walk you through it. Uh, we also have our jumpstart services that are designed to basically give you a jumpstart. We'll do like the first document or set of documents for you. And then you can take it from there and continue to do your updates. So really there's different options in the way that you go about um, working with NACLI and getting the documents in. Well, in doing some of these automations, do you, do you suggest that people, um, the, the way that I would approach it is probably to iterate through, to create, if I were creating a, a lease, a set of leases or something like that, I would probably create a simple lease and then I would put all my information in there and then I would just make it a little bit more complex and a little bit more complex. And is that a good way to kind of approach this? That's my favorite way to approach it, actually. Okay. I mean, because otherwise you you it, it becomes overwhelming mm -hmm. um you know if you get if we do a document we've done enough of them we can just jump in and go for it right 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 but if you're the attorney getting in let's just start with that mail merge feature let's get that in there right and then you can layer some conditional logic and then you mm -hmm. can layer some other pieces and so over time, you've, you're, you're building your system. It doesn't have to all be done in one day. And I think the worst thing that I, the hardest thing is, is that, you know, law school seems to have taught everyone that they need to have everything perfect mm -hmm. to start, Finished. right? Finished at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's it's exactly got to right. be exactly right. Well, you know what? It's okay. It, it's iter doing the iterative get you a lot further if you do one percent a month in improvement and by the end of the year you're going to have a whole lot more done than if you're shooting for that whole hundred percent in one month mm -hmm. because you'll never get it will just be overwhelming and you won't never get there right right well it, and i can see how how that iterative uh method would work with wills could work with leases could work with some some real estate contracts could work with you know many many um, things that we do because a lot of the stuff that we as attorneys do is a a nugget and then we build stuff off of that you know so right. to me the just automating the the mail creating something that is basically mail merge is is a huge step in in buying yourself some time you know but even here this is this is still at the first step we're beyond that because we're still um we're taking the information about, for example, about the real estate and we're saving it into the right. database. And right. now not, not only can we reuse the document, but we can reuse the information that we've input. Right. Um, and then from there we can say, okay, can we have a third party put this information in? Can we have right. our, our tenant or our landlord or, or something like that? Um, right. 
and I, I can I can envision a lot of scenarios with, with with this, but I I'm I'm really glad for people to see kind of under the hood here because it is a different you know this doesn't look like what I think of necessarily when I think document automation although it is but it, I've I've heard somebody say that that document automation is you know kind of productization in disguise or, or systemization in disguise you know we're not just you know, creating a document out of a database. Right. We're, yeah. we're solving a problem here, really. Yeah. And we're solving the whole problem in a really efficient way. Right. Right. Well, Kim, thank you for, for showing me around here and thanks for, for putting this together. I, I really appreciate it. Um, and if anybody wants to know more about Nackley, they can always go to nackley.io. And as you can see from the upper right-hand corner, that's K-N-A-C-K-L-Y.io. And I'm sure they can contact you guys there. Is there anywhere else specific that, that you'd like them to go? Uh, no, just go to nackley.io, um, click schedule a demo there. It's a great place. And you can pr peruse it, listen to our podcasts. Um, just see how, how Nackley works and how it's going to help you. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, Kim. Well, once again, thanks for, uh, thanks for joining me. Okay. Thank we'll you. See, we'll see you next time.